When people talk of famous pirates, the name Blackbeard, Calico Jack, William Kidd and female pirates such as Anne Bonny and Grace O'Malley may come to mind. These pirates mostly operated in the 16th and 17th centuries in the Caribbean. But there is one pirate which stands head and shoulders above the rest and the name was Ching Shi. Ching Shi was the most powerful and successful female pirate in history. She was a prominent pirate in middle Qin China who operated around the China Sea in the early 19th century. Ching Shi was born Shi Yang in 1775 in the province of Guangdong in South China. Times would have been extremely tough and in her early 20s, in order to make a living, she became a Cantonese prostitute and worked in a floating brothel in Canton or Gangzhou in southern China. In 1801, she married Cheng Wan, a well-known pirate who came from a family of famous pirates whose roots dated back to the Ming Dynasty. She fully participated in her husband's piracy and became known as Cheng Wan Sao, wife of Cheng Wan. Cheng Shi and Cheng Wan had three children, where the first child was adopted. Cheng Wan used his reputation and naval strength to unite former rivaling Cantonese pirate fleets into a unified alliance, forming a huge coalition from small groups of pirates into a federation of 70,000 men and 400 junk ships. The coalition consisted of six fleets that were colored blue, red, green, black, white, and yellow. By 1804, the fleets were a formidable force throughout China and became known as a Red Flag Fleet. Cheng Wan died in Vietnam on the 16th of November 1807 at the young age of 39, where Ching Shi became the leader, taking control of the pirate fleet. And two years later, in 1809, she commanded over 800 large junks and 1,000 smaller ships, along with 70,000 men and women in a pirate crew. With this power, she was in full control of the Red Flag Fleet, which now controlled the South China Seas. She shared her power with her lieutenants, which enabled her to gain their trust. With her powerful fleet, she collected money by raiding government camps and ships and was sailing to river towns and coastal villages, collecting money by force and intimidation, where she became even more powerful. Ching Shi and her army of pirates had become so powerful they were virtually untouchable and the government could not control them. They offered her and her fellow pirates amnesty for their crimes and even asked them to join the Imperial Chinese Navy. However, Ching Shi wanted more power and in order to remain in control of the Federation, she sought the support of the most powerful members of her husband's family and in turn gaining the loyalty of the fleet captains would be an extremely loyal to her husband and won over the remaining captains. To gain more power, she seduced her stepson Chung Po Tsi due to his loyalties and ties to her husband, thereby securing a leader who would be loyal to her and accepted by the lower ranking pirates. By being able to retain an even more powerful leadership role, she then set about uniting the fleet by issuing a strict code of laws that were rigorously enforced such as instant beheadings for disobeying her orders, no stealing, all booty had to be group inspected. Female captives were released, however, some pirates kept the beautiful women as wives or concubines, but had to be faithful to them. Unattractive women were released, and any remaining women were held for ransom. If a pirate raped the female captive, he was immediately executed. However, her rules were strict and brutal, where if a pirate had consensual sex with a captive, he was beheaded and the woman had cannonballs attached to her legs and was thrown overboard. For other violations, they were flogged, locked in irons, or hung, drawn and quartered. Deserters had their ears chopped off and then paraded around. The code led to fearless actions when attacking and desperation in defence, especially when outnumbered by the enemy. Under Ching Shi, the fleet had full control over many of the coastal villages where some of the settlements were taxed. She robbed towns and markets from Macau to Canton. On one occasion, she was so callous in the village of San Shan that 80 men were beheaded and the women and children were abducted and held for ransom or were sold into slavery. 
In January 1808, the Chinese government had had enough of her attacks and attempted to demolish her fleet in a series of battles. But Jingxi was too powerful and managed to inflict heavy defeats on the Chinese navy, where she captured many of their ships. Under Jingxi's rule, her red flag fleet was virtually unbeatable, leaving the Chinese government as well as European bounty hunters at a loss in how to overpower her. Jing Shi even captured a ship called the Marquis of Eli that was owned by the powerful East India Company, capturing Captain Richard Glasspool and seven sailors, but were later released. In November 1809, Jing Shi and her fleet had met their match when they suffered a series of defeats by the powerful Portuguese navy at the Battle of the Tiger's Mouth. In their final battle at Cheklap Kok on the 21st of January in 1810, Jing Shi and her fleet were forced to surrender to the Portuguese navy. It appears that Jing Shi's reign was over when she was forced to accept an amnesty that was offered by the Qing imperial government, where all her pirates had to surrender. Out of a total of 70,318 pirates, the amnesty allowed 60 pirates to be banished, 151 were exiled, and 126 were executed. The remaining pirates only had to surrender their weapons. Jing Shi arranged for her stepson Zheng Po and other pirates in the fleet to be given positions in the Chinese bureaucracy. Jing Shi also requested that the government recognize her as the wife of Chun Po, which was granted in 1813, and later gave birth to a son, Chung Yu Lin, and would later give birth to a daughter. After her stepson and later her husband Zheng Po perished at sea in 1822, Jing Shi and her children moved to Macau and opened a gambling house and also became involved in the salt trade. She later served as an advisor to Lin Zhu, who was a Chinese head of states and best known for his role in the First Opium War of 1839-1842. After an amazing and brutal life as a powerful pirate, Jing Shi died in 1844 in Macau at the age of 69.